Very nice. That's one of the most organized Prius I've ever seen. And in a Prius, you've got to make use of every square inch you've got. Well, and welcome back to my next video. Today, we're here with Heather. Hi, Heather. Hi. Hi, and Bob. We're going to get to meet her and talk about living in a Prius. Absolutely. I'm always astonished when I meet people living <laughs> in Priuses. Yeah, it can be done. It can be done. So there are a number of huge advantages, but there are some disadvantages too. Of course, yes. Yeah. Headroom. <laughs> Headroom, yeah. Just a teeny tiny little space. Exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, but some of the big advantages are the gas mileage and... Uh, yes. Oh. And the climate control. Yeah. I mean, you can't beat the climate control. Yeah. How does that work? Um, so with the hybrid battery, of course, it's, you know, it'll run on gas or electric, depending on what it needs at the time. So when you're using the climate control, your heat or your cooling, it'll draw down the electric battery until the electric battery gets to a certain level. And then it will kick on the gas battery, the, the gasoline engine to charge up the battery to a certain level. And then it shuts the gas engine off, lather, rinse, repeat. And that's to keep you warm in the winter, cool in the summer. And it works really well, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Uh, to me, nice. the uh, air conditioning is the big thing. Yes, especially out in a desert like this. Yeah, there's just no beating uh, beating the heat. And except in a Prius, then you re really can quite easily. Exactly. And most hybrids, I understand, have a ready mode type construct that you can do. It's called ready mode on the, tr on the Prius. That's right. what allows you to do that. Now, I didn't buy my Prius for all of those advantages. I bought it for the gas mileage while I was still in a stick and brick. And then I saw um, another YouTuber, like within 24 hours of buying my Prius, I saw a video of hers where she was living and traveling in her Prius. And I went, I can do that? I can do that. <laughs> and that's how I got hooked. So you just ran and stumbled across it on YouTube and thought, I can do that. Absolutely. And wow. of course, I was looking at van life and, you know, RV right. life because I was interested. But I had, that was the first it had ever occurred to me that you could live in a Prius. Right. Well, would you be okay if we checked out your yeah, uh, Prius? Absolutely. Come see. We'll do that. Let's go check out that Prius, folks. This section here is the kitchen area for me. I do still have my passenger seat. I haven't decided to remove that yet. I might in the future. Um, it is my least favorite part of my car. It is still a work in progress of trying to make it become something functional for me. I have my jug of water right here, and I wrapped it in Reflectix in the hope that that'll keep the sun and the heat off of it. Um, I'll let you know if that works out all right. <laughs> and so I have had two different pumps on this. It's a standard one gallon water jug. And both of the pumps had the problem of my cat can step on it and set it off and flood my car. <laughs> so, so I've had to get away, get rid of the pumps, both of them. And now I just pull the gallon up and dump it when I need it. And then under this little bit of produce is a Hot Logic Mini that's new to me this mm -hmm. year. I've learned how to warm things in it, but not how to cook in it yet. Um, but it's fantastic to be able to warm up something and have a hot meal in the cold desert is super handy. I have a soft side cooler tucked in under there, mm -hmm. and that's where I keep any any produce or perishable, anything that might need a cooler environment. So if I have a cheese or a yogurt, I put it in there. But I shop about every three days, so I don't actually have refrigeration, and I don't like using ice. Um, but that is the coolest part of the car because I can keep it dark and out of the sun. I have some privacy shades for the front window that tuck up into this little pouch here. I bought these off Amazon and they're magnetic. Oh. So these just unravel and they magnetize right oh, to the nice. frame. And so they're really easy to put in. I can put them in from inside the car, which is super handy. And they block, you know, all the view. So at night, this gives me kind of all the privacy I need. And then right. when I'm ready to go, you just pull them right off. Wow. Yeah, and they tuck up really small, which is nice. And then across the windshield when I need privacy or just shade even, I have the standard fold-out Reflectix type. So on these back windows, I wanted the ability to have privacy in the daytime. Mm -hmm. So I put this white perforated vinyl on the windows. From the research that I did, it seems to be a very gray area. Like you can't have 50% tint in the state that I started out in but there's nothing on the books about perforated vinyl. So it kind of skirts that gray area of, you know, it depends on what the officer in whatever state would happen to say. But since I couldn't find anything, I figured I'd beg forgiveness if needed. 
but it blocks out 50%. And it's the same stuff that you find for advertising on bus windows. But I wanted to have that same level of privacy with the window down. And so I got these custom shades from Car Shades. They're nice. based out of the UK. And there's spring steel around the edges. And you can order these from the UK and get them shipped to you. They're about $100 for the, for the set of six that you need for a Prius is about $100. And then to make that full privacy at night, roll the window up, pull this down. And this is just poster board I bought at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 tree. And you cut it to size, and pop it in there, and now nobody can see a thing. Very, very nice. Yep. Um, up <laughs> in there, I do have a curtain rod. Oh, yeah. It's a flat piece of steel that I purchased at Home Depot. And you just tuck it in to the side panels and it'll bend to the curve of the roof. And so that maximized my headspace to put that bar in. It did, and really uh, keeps light out and probably heat and cold. Exactly, and it, so I have a fleece on this side with pretty scenery and black on the opposite side. I use my handles a lot to hold things like my headlamp. Right now my laptop's hanging off of it. I've used a bunch of cargo nets to keep things from falling out when I open the doors. And then this whole thing is a build out. So this will open when I don't have it full of stuff to allow me to access the storage that's under here. And that for me is all full of craft supplies. <laughs> and then the bed itself, the way a Prius works, it has a 60-40 split. So the 40% split is behind the driver's seat and the 60% split is behind the passenger seat. So I'm kind of a wide body girl. So I put my 60% and use that for my wide body. <laughs> and and like uh, a lot of Prius owners will tell you, it's about six feet from the very back of the hatch to the back of the passenger seat. I'm only five foot five, so six feet works for me. I do carry a tent in case I need to secure a spot of land. I haven't used it yet, so it may go the way of the dodo eventually. We'll right. see. Um, but yeah, so my bed here is a camp pad, a camping mattress uh -huh. that you can inflate the inflation end is down here but i'll show you the pad down here oh no i won't anyway it's a camp mattress right here one of my favorite modifications is this actually it's a standard pillowcase like mm -hmm. you would have on a bed right. i installed a zipper on the end of it and it's now my stuff sack for my sleeping bag right so this is my 20 degree sleeping bag and i have a, another pillowcase that i can't find right at the moment um, that carries the stuff sack and the 30 degree sleeping bag. And those were camping items that I already owned. So I was able to put all of that in here and have two down sleeping bags with me and have a down pillow also. My cat bed. So I'll, I'll show you the cat later, but that's her bed. And during the night when I'm sleeping back here, this goes on the driver's seat. And she'll sleep on the cat bed in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. or she'll sleep on me. It depends on her day and her mood. Now, these cabinets are normally for displaying expensive tennis shoes for people who collect Nike and Adidas and that. That's what these are designed for. Oh. You can get them that open on the side, or you can get them that open up or down. So previously, I had a cargo net across here. And it was a huge jumbled mess that kept falling all over my bed. So this past December, while I was recovering from cataract surgery, I thought there's got to be a better way. And I saw these advertised and I'm like, that, I bet that would work. They're 13 inches deep and that works out almost perfectly with the size bed platform that I have. It covers that 40% area really well. It gives me eight compartments that I can work with. Very nice. That's one of the... Most organized Prius I've ever seen. Yeah, and it really maximizes the height. And in a Prius, you've got to make in use of every square inch you've got. Yeah, your bed is lower because you don't have to store stuff under it. Exactly. And then down under here, Priuses have a trunk that's located under this. Um, I would have to remove all of these to get anything out of the trunk at the moment. Um, but down under here, I have 20 different board games with me. Oh, wow. So that if anybody wants to play board games, I'm happy to hook up and bring out what I have and share it with people. Um, She's my baby and she travels with me. And Callie is not a fan of the outdoors in the midday, so she's going to go back in and hide. 
one of the custom builds that I did was put in her litter box. This whole piece here behind the map is where her litter box lives. And it's got that angled entry point so that I can lay my seat back and do the crawl through from the driver's seat into the back without blocking her access to her litter box. When I first started out, her litter box was on the floor behind the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And when I laid the seat back, she couldn't access her litter box mm -hmm. at night. So the custom litter box went in so that she has 24 access to her, to her litter box when she needs it. I have tried several toileting systems. They all failed miserably um, until I ran into this one. As you can see, it stores in a drawstring bag. And I found a bedpan at a thrift, at a yard sale, even. My original plan had been to use this container, but it's mm -hmm. much too tall. Yes. I cannot squat over this in the headroom that I have. Right. <laughs> but the bedpan is designed to be used on a bed laying down, and that's the room I have to work with. So I use this. I have now done both deeds in the uh, bedpan. It works great. When I know that I'm going to number two, I put it inside of a grocery bag, mm -hmm. do what I need to do, and then pull the grocery bag up. It's all self-contained. Put that in another bag so it doesn't sink up the car. And then if you're going to do a number one, a urination, that you just can do right in here and then transfer it to the container. They nestled in by themselves. That worked out really well. I do the transfer from this to this over the litter box. And that way, if I have any overage, it goes right into the litter box. First thing in the morning, I clean her litter box, I clean my litter box, and then I throw all the household trash away first thing in the morning. So it stays pretty tidy and pretty smell free. That's how we manage that whole process. Great. So yeah, I think that's about everything. Yeah, I, that's amazing what you've accomplished. Yeah, and when you think about how you use your space in your house, you're usually sitting at a chair or laying in your bed. Right. And that's what I do in my car. I either sit in the chair at the driver's seat or I lay down on my bed. Right. You know, right. and that's whether I'm watching TV, working on the computer, whatever I'm doing. Do you set up much of an outside camp then? I don't tend to. I do a lot of stealth camping in cities. Mm -hmm. And so I made sure when I did my build that I could put my privacy screens up from inside the car without ever getting out of my vehicle. So I can just pull up, turn, up, turn off the car, which isn't quite true of a Prius, but... People think I turned it off and tuck in and be dark and nobody will know a thing. That's yeah. Really now, important. when I'm out in an area like this, I could, but because I don't tend to live my life that way, I don't. It's, it's awesome. very comfortable. I really like your, your storage system, yes. the cabinets on, yes. on in the back. That Those, really helps. That's new to this month, to last month and they're working perfectly. I'm so happy. Yeah. So you're young yet. You're not yes, retired. Correct. And why? Why? <laughs> well, the whole... I want to live in a Prius and travel. Right. Um, two answers at the same time. I spent, let's say, 10 years raising my son, who is now 27. Um, spent the 10 years during his you know, teenage years working with social services. I am a social worker by training and trade. And there's a high burnout factor mm. for that. I mean, yeah. it's a super gratifying work, but it's very emotionally, you know, dense work and then i left that to go take care of my mother who was elderly and aging and she eventually passed away so after 30 years of taking care of other people i went you know i think it's time to take care of me for a bit absolutely and i had always wanted to travel the you know the united states and i was always looking at rvs and road treks and you know van conversions and tiny houses and i really wanted to go travel and it always felt so strange to me to have this great big backyard of the United States or even your own state, wherever you're from. So that's why I got into it. What keeps me here is I'm loving discovering history through the places I can drive to. Right. So you just wanted to live your life really to the fullest. Didn't yeah. You? And finally for myself instead yeah. of for others, which is right. a common theme among women. <laughs> it is. It's something I say all the time is uh, now is your time. Yes. Well, it sounds like you've really, you're really enjoying your new life. I am. Here. I very much am. Yeah. Good. Good. And you have to work. Yes. Because uh, you're still young yet. But, <laughs> and uh, at some okay. point I will be gainfully employed. If you have an employment opportunity where I can sit down on a horse, on a truck, on a stool, 
give me a call. All right. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, uh, do you have any social media you want to tell people about? Absolutely. I do have a YouTube channel. I'm looking for more viewers. Please like, click, and subscribe. It is at Heather underscore Trek, T-R-E-K. Um, that's where you can find me on YouTube. Very good. Go check out her channel, folks. So you'll Thank be glad you, you did. Appreciate that. Lots of good ideas there. Well, Heather, thank you so much for Absolutely. sharing your uh, your home with us and your story. You're so welcome. Really, thank you for really taking good. the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, folks, I'm sure you've gotten some great ideas here. If so, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.